So I'm Candace Williams. A field really comes out of some of the particular kind of historiographic narratives of blackness and representations of blackness, how we ethically or aesthetically represent black bodies and black labor and black sexuality and black reproduction. In this project with Virginia, what we butted up against, like primarily with research, was essentially the lost cause narrative. Coming up against not just like history books that had false information, but really having to do a lot of intense archaeology on communities that were like completely politically erased. And especially dealing with incarcerated people, dealing with sex workers, dealing with people who make pornographic images. Tango actually is Congolese, it's a word that means the sun and uh, interval. The roots of tango, the African roots of tango, milongo, cayenque, uh, candombe, turned into other forms, other Europeanized dance forms. Couple dance forms um, really aren't preserved as African in authorship. We really only receive couple forms in the versions of like say twerking and like different kind of couple forms that are really kept alive within vernacular black dance. And what we see in the tango is this complete whitewashing of so many different African elements of, of the dance. So then thinking about that kind of erasure, the kind of erasure that is ultimately an absorption into like form, and then thinking about the kind of erasure that happens in the, in the Deep South and specifically in Virginia, where the labor even of so many slaves and sharecroppers to chain gangs and incarcerated bodies is really not authored as their labor, it's authored as the progress of the South. They're completely erased from, you know, the walls of the subsequent buildings that they've erected. It was heartbreaking, actually, you know, sort of seeing how many times it happened that we would want to find information on, you know, prisoners in a certain location, and the only thing that we'd find were field recordings of their singing. My interest in tango is also this interesting collage, this kind of greater interest in what the whole not equaling the sum of its parts means. White supremacy uses representation so extremely, you know, and, and I think especially representation of the other is an extremely potent form of social control. I feel like blackness is that inverse of that where we're constantly pieces of things. So it always goes back to like the double consciousness, the veil and sort of black, the black body and the black form and black being as collage. But yeah, just thinking about plants as, as dynamic containers for kind of speculative fictions. And it's not just that plants are forced to migrate and that they're also sentient and that they also have all these features um, that we can communicate as like humanistic. It's more, that blackness actually also acts as a similar dynamic container. You know, the primitive, the natural, the savage, the uncultivated. This kind of like, I don't know, overwhelming sense that we can be metaphorically entangled with so many things. There's a certain logic to primitivism that I think is really, really pervasive, especially in the art world, that really kind of concretizes a lot of our senses of truth and authenticity and how like, you know, we're, we're sort of mythologized as this perpetually fear-inducing carnivorous other. Black is the devil. We have so much cultural authority, you know? And because we really control this area of hypersoul, we control this area of hypersexuality, we control this area of hypertransmission, hypercommunication. We are the commodity fetishized, and so we don't have a way necessarily of turning that commodification into capital for Black communities. Imagine a Black entertainment tax. Imagine that if you downloaded an Aretha Franklin song before you went out to protest for Black lives, and you weren't Black that you paid you know, a diasporic fucking account. <laughs> That's been definitely a thing, thinking through these dynamic containers and mythic containers and how they actually can help us. I mean, I think there's a kind of Epicurean sense of like the calm garden, the perfect garden, that like actually we're all as humans striving for.
I'd like to end with like the last line from Candide that he says, now we must cultivate our gardens.